Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. So the second jury trial just ended for a January 6th defendant. And let's just say that these people should probably stick with bench trials. I'm just saying. 49-year-old former Virginia police officer and Army veteran Thomas Robertson was convicted of all six charges against him. Here's the deal. Here's what went down in court. I've talked about Robertson in the past, so you guys are probably going to recall that he and his former partner, uh, 30-year-old Jacob Fracker, were both initially charged with the four basic misdemeanors. Well, Robertson's charges increased, and then he was sent back to jail last summer, where he's been since last summer, because new evidence surfaced. And also, he was caught purchasing more than 30 guns and ammo. And he knew that he wasn't allowed to be making that purchase because he tried to disguise the ammunition that he was buying online. He paid for the bullets using the Venmo app. And in the description area, Robertson said that $3,700, that's how much ammo he was buying, $3,700 was for wedding photos. In addition to all of the weapons that he purchased, after his arrest, which, by the way, is prohibited when you're facing federal charges, federal criminal charges, um, the FBI also found additional weapons in his home, including a partially constructed pipe bomb. So a superseding indictment was filed in his case, and two felonies were added to those four misdemeanors. Plus, they upgraded some of the misdemeanors to include a dangerous weapon add-on. So you guys may also remember that the government refused initially to sever Robertson's and Fracker's cases until just recently when they finally agreed to offer Fracker a plea deal in return for his cooperation and his testimony against Robertson. So Fracker pleaded guilty to conspiracy and he testified for the prosecution last week, which had to have been difficult for him. He said it was. Apparently, they were so close that Fracker used to call Robertson dad and Robertson called him son. So in court, Robertson's defense attorney said, my client only entered the Capitol because he was retrieving Fracker because the two of them got separated. So he just went in to get him and then, you know, to leave. Well, Fracker said on the stand that Robertson never mentioned that. So when they were finally reunited in the Capitol crypt, they were in there taking pictures. He said they were singing and they were clapping along with the rest of the mob. But Fracker said not only did he not mention that to him that, oh, I just came in to get you, but he also didn't have any kind of sense of urgency for them to leave. He never urged Fracker to, to get out. In addition, Fracker testified that on the ride back home, Robertson was talking about a second potential civil war. Um, still, Robertson's attorney of course, countered all this. He argued that, oh, no, my client never planned to enter the Capitol. He wasn't trying to stop the certification of the Electoral College votes. But the prosecutor was able to prove that he did have intent to enter the Capitol because body cam footage from the police showed that Robertson was inside the Capitol wearing a gas mask and he was holding a three foot wooden stick. He also gave Fracker and then the other guy who traveled with them gas masks. So he clearly anticipated something. I mean, you, you don't take gas masks to just go see the president speak. In addition, the footage also showed that Robertson refused to move when officers were trying to make their way through the area they were in. They were trying to get to other officers to give them assistance and Robertson refused, refused to move. Um, on top of that, there were two Metropolitan Police officers that testified. One of them said that Robertson struck him and another officer with that stick. 
So his defense attorney tried to counter again. He said that, you know, Robertson has an old war injury. He served in Afghanistan. And so he needs the stick to help him walk. But they had other people who testified who said, I've never seen him use any kind of walking cane or anything to do, you know, that he needs to get around with. And honestly, would he be on the police force if he needed that? If, if he can't even walk through a Capitol without a walking stick, how is he going to chase down a, a perpetrator? How is he going to chase down a criminal? So not believable. Um, But he also argued that Robertson was just holding the stick in a defensive posture because of the the crowd, because the crowd was so out of control. Clearly, the jury didn't buy this based on the way things turned out. But, you know, also um, part of the reason appears to be Robertson's own words following the attack. The jury was able to hear about his social media posts and about him boasting about his actions on January 6th and then threatening additional violence. I've talked about that in some of the updates I've done on him as well. But for example, in a January 9th Facebook post, Robertson wrote, quote, we were stomping on the roof of their safe room chanting, whose house? Our house. A government scared of its people. The pictures of them huddled in the floor crying is the most American thing I have ever seen. We, not Antifa, stormed it. Hmm, gosh, his own people, though, are saying it was Antifa and BLM. So I wonder, first, I wonder what Robertson thinks about that, if they're trying to take this away from him, his fellow MAGA, quote unquote, patriots, hatriots, as I call them, or, or, you know, and then what does the jury think? Like, were there people on the jury who really did believe it was Antifa? And now they're realizing, oh, wait, th- this is someone who actually broke in. And he's saying, no, it wasn't Antifa. It was us. I would just love to interview them. Anyway, the following day, Robertson wrote, quote, the next revolution started in D.C. 1621. The only voice these people will now listen to is violence. And he put violence in all caps. Um, He also said that he was ready for, quote, open armed rebellion. And the jury also learned about Robertson's attempt to destroy evidence. So following his arrest, Robertson texted a friend and he said, quote, anything that may have been problematic is destroyed. And he explained that his phone, quote, took a lake swim. And then his former partner, Fracker, also confirmed that Robertson took his phone as well. And he just assumed that it was destroyed, that that Robertson destroyed it. So Robertson was convicted of the following charges, obstructing an official proceeding, civil disorder, entering a restricted building or grounds with a dangerous weapon, two counts of disorderly conduct, and one of those also carries the increased penalty for possession of a dangerous weapon, and also one count of tampering with a document or proceeding, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's one of the felonies. That's one of the major ones. So if Robertson is allowed to serve his sentences concurrently, which is the way it usually works. He's looking at up to 20 years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines. Now, based on previous cases and who the judge is, I doubt this sentence is going to be anywhere near 20 years, so I'm not going to get your hopes up on that. Um, Given what we've seen so far, I would expect to see maybe two to three years jail time, prison time, and then probably a few years of probation after that. The judge, by the way, is Christopher Cooper. He's an Obama appointee, and he's been pretty lenient with these January 6th defendants. Although I have to say, I haven't seen him sentence anyone for multiple felonies yet. So that could be a game changer that could make a difference in this case. Uh, The sentencing hearing hasn't been scheduled yet, but I will absolutely let you guys know when that all goes down. But as I said in the beginning, these defendants are not faring so well with jury trials. Seems like their peers don't exactly like what they're hearing and seeing. Uh, The judges have gone way easier 
on these people, on these defendants. And, you know, I, I think that this conviction really seals the deal. It really proves that Judge Trevor McFadden is a right wing pathetic hack who needs to step down or he just needs to be removed from the bench. Because for him to completely acquit Matthew Martin and then the jury comes back in not just this case, but also against Guy Reffitt, the one from Texas, with a guilty verdict on all counts. Come on. McFadden is a joke. He is an absolute joke. So anyway, guys, I'll let you know when I hear more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.